Hey, it's Brad here from Get Out There Magazine, and today I'm here in the Laurel Highlands of Pennsylvania for the 2015 edition of Equinox Traverse. Equinox Traverse is a 44-hour adventure race that will see competitors travel on and off trail through mountain biking, orienteering, trekking, running, climbing, and paddling. After receiving their maps, teams began to quickly plot the expansive race course. The first leg of Equinox Traverse would kick off with biking, and racers soon took their place at the start. The first bike leg would pit athletes against a series of road-in trail, where they could speed along through the Pennsylvania countryside. In the Equinox Traverse, careful footing going across this river. If you're afraid of heights, don't do this. <laughs> the, the first orienteering course we had, uh, we tried to make very unique points up there. Just about to start the tracking section, which is 11.2. That course was made so people would go up there and they could get to a point and try to make a decision how they attack the next one. It was fun listening to people how they attack it because everyone would seem to attack the points differently. Some were great, some overshot big time. The first trek would take teams high into the Laurel Highlands, where trails and bushwhacking required careful navigation to hit all checkpoints in time. Checkpoint time! That is freaking gorgeous. They take a while to find these sometimes, but it's totally worth our effort. We made it to the transition from trek to bike. I'm gonna head out back on the bikes again, putting all the lights on because it's gonna get dark in a couple hours. We've got a lengthy bike ahead of us. So uh, gonna kill off a bunch of checkpoints and we'll check in with you later. After getting on the bikes, teams continue to push through the first quarter of the race as daylight began to fade. As darkness began to fall, racers faced the added difficulty of nighttime navigation through a series of double and technical single track trails. Mechanicals were a constant reminder of the wear and tear difficult sections were having on both bike and racer alike. Now many teams slept, they just kept pushing straight through to the end. Uh, and that was our goal, going through. I didn't think any of the top teams would sleep at all, none of them did. They went straight through, rested, but none, no one slept and just got, went, went, went. Sun's coming up now, it's morning. We're uh, closer, getting closer to 24 hours into the race. We're almost a full day into Equinox Traverse. And we're gonna go hit some bike checkpoints now. As the sun rose, day two dawned with many teams still on their bikes. Rejuvenated by the sun's warmth, racers continued to tackle the expansive bike course, collecting as many checkpoints as they could along the way. Teams pushed to reach a second orienteering section, but in the interest of time, several chose to forgo the Rogaine section and continued on their bikes to the paddle section. So we were unfortunately one minute late. Uh, it's getting on the water, and uh, we're not gonna be doing the whitewater rafting anymore. So it's an unfortunate sort of circumstance, but uh, fortunately for us, we have a bunch of more biking and trekking checkpoints ahead of us, and that's just how adventure racing goes sometimes. We've had a few difficulties out there on course, but it's been a great uh, couple days of racing so far. As most teams made the cutoff, they would hit the water and paddle the river along the full course. Several teams, including ourselves, would miss the cutoff and faced a short course of an additional bike leg. First checkpoint on our short course route. We're on the bikes and we'll be trying to pick up four checkpoints before finishing Equinox Traverse. 
the light would soon fade as the teams began the second straight night of racing. Racers faced sleep deprivation, exhaustion, darkness, and injuries as they embarked on what would be the final few hours of racing. Keep on keeping on. After collecting the remainder of the checkpoints, teams made their way back to Ohio file, where the finish line awaited. After 40 hours of racing, our team reached the end, finishing in good spirits and placement. Our goal was try to keep the winning teams in a 36 to 38 hour win range. We gave you a lot of options how to do stuff. Um, it was just not one way of doing it, there was multiple ways of getting around. Um, and we wanted everyone to use their, use their skill advantages to make those choices. The greatest endurance athletes anywhere is actually Think about what a marathon is to somebody when you guys ran almost to them. Or think about what a 100 mile mountain bike race is when you guys did 120 or 130 miles, you know? And to think about the fact that there's nobody there handing you a glass of water or cheering for you or saying, go this way. It's the greatest endurance sport on the planet, in my opinion. And I, I would make that argument with anybody, anybody. <laughs>